new titles. Hello tech friends. Today we've got a floppy disk. Hmm, nothing unusual about that. Let's see if we can get this to communicate with the Steam Deck. I think we can do it. This is inspired by a comment left by Ryan Lester on a previous video. Makes me want to get a USB floppy drive for my deck when it arrives. Well, you know what? I'm one step ahead of you. Let's see what we can do. We're going to need one of these. Here's our floppy drive, regular USB connection, and we'll be able to connect it to the Steam Deck via a converter that I've got here. USB down to USB-C, we can do that. But first we need to do some settings on the Steam Deck and that's a lot easier if we've got it docked and we've got access to a keyboard and a mouse. So let's get on and do that. Here we are on the Steam Deck desktop. If I plug in the floppy drive, into the USB dock that I've got attached to it. We'll hear it whir up. Very satisfying noise. And it pops up in the bottom right hand corner here. Floppy disk, mount and open. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much, Steam Deck. And everything takes just a little bit longer as you might expect when we're dealing with floppy disks. Um, but it pops up in Dolphin, which is the file explorer that's installed on here by default. Here are all the files. We've also got this extra folder here, System Volume Information, which has been added by the OS. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually a folder on the actual disk itself. Did it write that to the disk, or is it something that the OS is just sort of pretending is on there? Not sure. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though. This is going to work anyway, I think. Um, this is actually the demo for Lemmings, so that will work in DOSBox without issue. And if we slide down here, we can see... It's, uh, it's appeared as a removable disk, which is great. Um, if I click up here, though, we'll actually see the file path to where this disk has been mounted. So obviously, if you're in Windows or something like that, this is going to be on your A drive. Um, and we'll be replicating that in DOSBox. But we need to point uh, DOSBox to this to mount this as a drive that it can read from and recognize. So what we need to do to do that is we go into the dot DOSBox folder, which might not be visible immediately because it's a hidden folder, um, but you can view it by pressing Ctrl and H if it's not already showing. Just a little demonstration. That's what it normally looks like. Pop it open dot DOSBox. Okay, in we go. We've got the config file. Let's open that up. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, this is how I normally have things mounted. So I've put an actual folder called DOSBox in this home folder, which is called this. And this is replicating my different drives. So D drive is a CD, a C drive is a hard drive, and then A and B are acting as if they're floppy drives. Um, and that's what is set up down here. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can enjoy that a little better. So mount C, A, and that's shown you the different uh, letters that it's connected to. So let's do an extra one here, and this will be called mount E. And we can take the uh, address of this floppy drive from up here. We can copy that and we can paste it in here. And then after that, we just put in hyphen T. Let's do it in lowercase, make sure we're not going to have any issues there. And save the file, and then that's your config sorted for DOSBox. Um, but there's a little bit of a problem there, is that that is in the root file system, and by default, uh, DOSBox doesn't have access to the root file system, so that's not going to work. You're going to need a program called FlatSeal, which, depending on which tutorial you followed on YouTube to do this, you've probably installed this already. Um, we select DOSBox out of the list of applications on the left-hand side, and if we scroll all the way down here to File Systems, this switch here will tell DOSBox it can access all the system files. Well, I'm sure you can imagine that that's not something that you generally want to do with most programs. You don't want them to have access to your file system, um, so, you know, be a bit careful with this sort of thing. If we turn this off and then run DOSBox, E drive, it say it hasn't mounted because it essentially failed to mount it when it tried. If I switch this on and then run DOSBox again, E drive, there it goes, it's worked. So we've got all those files, including, weirdly, that system one at the top. Now, when you normally hit DIR in uh, DOS, 
on a floppy disk, it would read the floppy disk there and then, and you'd hear it chugging away, and then it would come back with the uh, the list of files. But it hasn't done that here, so I think maybe when you initialize DOSBox to mount something, it kind of takes a snapshot of it or something like that. Um, but when I do actually try and run something, so there's a readme file there, it actually does chug away while it opens it up and runs it. So let's just show you VJ Lemmings. Um, be fun to run it in EGA though, just to really mix things up. So I'll do that instead, number two and number one. And I mean, it looks like VGA to me, but I guess, ah yeah, no, I can see the difference. If I press F1 there, the color's a bit unusual, mouse is all working and things like that. And hey, this is working. So let's press this and this, and off he goes, our little lemming. Now, inevitably, we haven't got any sound with this. <laughs> Again, I think this probably uh, something to do with the fact I've got the demo on the go. Um, but essentially, this is running off the floppy disk, which is, I think, pretty cool. Okay, right, let's exit that. Will this work if we try and connect the Steam Deck directly? Let's find out. Okay, we're back with the Steam Deck in Steam Deck mode. We've connected the floppy drive directly to the Steam Deck itself. And then we're gonna dive now into DOSBox. And we've got this map to the E drive. So let's put that in. E colon, enter. Can we see the files that are on there? D, I, R, enter. Yes, we can see the files. Can we run the game? VGA Lemmy, VGA Lemmy, not Lemmy from Motorhead. Uh, you wouldn't like that. We hit enter. It's starting the menu. One, one, takes us straight in. And here we are. So it's managed to load Lemmings, although it hasn't, you haven't heard the disc activity light, uh, the noise or the light go on. Um, I've mapped F1, which is how you start the game, to one of the back paddles here, and escape to the right-hand one here. So, because there's no seems to be no mouse control in the actual menu itself. Not quite sure why that screen appears like this. That is wonky. If I press the mouse button, I think we're off. There we go, and we've got sound this time. So there we go. Let's start digging down. Ah, oh, that's great. Lemmings on the go. The mouse in here is really pretty superb. Let's get a few of these guys home before we um, move on to see if we can show you the actual disk drive actually doing something. Um, in they go, making all the noises. Should we kill them off? Oh, I paused it. I did always like in Lemmings the fact that you've got a picture of two paws to indicate the pause function. Those guys are dead. Sorry for your loss. Um, and let's back out. Okay, so that works. Fantastic. Let's see if we can actually copy some files now. And by doing so, we should hear the activity light. So let us copy everything that's on this disk. And just as I hit enter now, which will be with the right thumbstick, uh, the, the right trigger, sorry, we're going to watch this little light down here and see it light up. There it goes. Hey, it's, it did it. It did it. Look, it shows us all the files that it copied. Hey, look, it really does work. Well, that was, I would consider, quite a journey. <laughs> <laughs> to get all that to work. Um, so there you go, it's possible. You can now walk around and uh, pull out your floppy disks, swap them with your friends who have also got Steam Decks and play games on there. I had, you see, I had this wild idea to actually install a Steam game and I was trying very hard to find the smallest Steam game that was out there, which was about a megabyte. Um, and I thought I'd try and get it to install it, but I don't think that's gonna be possible. But hey, look, we managed to get the drive to work anyway. Thanks for watching.